In this online lecture, we're going to discuss the stereochemistry of radical reactions. And we're just knowing one key point here. Here's what it's all about. If a chiral center happens to be created in a radical substitution or addition reaction, then a racemic mixture is the result. And what I want to just basically do is explain how this works to you and also talk about a quick product method as well. So let's say, for instance, this reaction, we've already learned the mechanism for. This, remember, is the radical addition of Br to an alkane. And remember what we've learned, it's a substitution reaction. We're replacing a CH bond with a CR bond. And remember, because this reaction is very selective, and because secondary hydrogens are more likely to be substituted than primary hydrogens, we know to substitute a CH bond on one of the secondary carbons with the CBr bond. So that's what we've learned so far. However, notice what happened here. If this is the product, then what you've created right there is a chiral center. Notice, this carbon has a hydrogen connected to him. He's got a methyl right here directly connected. He's got the ethyl group here in green, and he's got the Br as well. That's four different groups that makes him chiral. So the question is then, if we get a chiral center, then which kind of carbon do we get? Are we going to get an R-type carbon or an S-type carbon? Well, let's look at this here. We're actually going to get a racemic mixture. Let's rewrite this molecule this way so we can actually see its stereochemistry. Remember, the four groups here could be set by priority. Br would be 1, the ethyl would be 2, methyl would be priority 3, and the hydrogen, of course, is priority 4. He's in the back. We see which way the sequence turns. Notice it's turning R. So we would get R for this particular carbon, and this is one of the products you would get for this reaction. But you would also get the other, his partner here, his member, his enantiomer, which happens to be S. So, going back to our reaction, that means that our product here is we're going to get both the R and S. We're getting a racemic mixture because each one of these products is likely to form evenly. However, let's learn why this is happening this way. To know this, let's go back to the mechanism that we learned for this particular reaction. And let's just focus on the propagation step. Remember, this is what we learned before, that when you have the alkane with the Br radical, then what happens here is this particular electron movement, which gives us this HBr and an alkane radical. And then remember, the alkane radical then reacts in a second propagation step with a Br2 that hasn't been split. And what we get here is this electron movement, which leads to, of course, this as a result. Remember, when we learn this mechanism, I told you that you should be able to write it out quickly on a piece of paper. That's the level you're working towards. And this is part of the reason why, is so that we can get these concepts quickly without having to go, oh, wait a minute, what happened here? So, back to our explanation here. This is the propagation step that we want to focus on. And notice the characteristics here. We have the alkane radical with Br2. So going back to our reaction here, let's pretend we immediately got to that step. What would that look like? Well, this would be the particular alkane radical for this molecule. Notice it's a secondary radical. It's more stable than the primary radical. And let's also color code the groups here that are connected to him like this. And let's do this. Let's rewrite him in his stereochemical form, which looks like this. So, with this being our alkane radical, remember in that propagation step, this is when we add the Br2 to the alkane radical. And remember the arrow movement looks something like this. And remember at this step is when the C, that carbon right there, makes a connection to that Br. The question is, how does it make the connection to the carbon there? Notice our geometry of our alkane radical. It's actually trigonal planar. It's flat which means when the Br adds to that radical carbon, it could add either from the back or it can add to the front. And remember, when it does add, it creates that chiral center here. And what we're seeing here is that if it adds to the front, you're going to get one type of carbon, let's say the R carbon. And if it adds to the back, you're going to get the other carbon, the S carbon. 
So, take-home messages, since this carbon is flat and can be attacked from either side, this is why we're getting the racemic mixture that we're getting. However, let's talk about quick product method here. Again, we got to get it done quickly on an exam. Let's talk about your thought process here. So you're on the test, you see this reaction right here, and the first thing that should pop up into your mind is you should say, oh, wait a minute, this looks like a radical reaction. I got the HV light there. I got Br2 and I got an alkane. So this is alkane addition via radical. I know this reaction is a substitution reaction. I'm going to substitute one of the hydrogens with a Br, and not just any hydrogen. I remember that the trend is tertiary, secondary, more than primary, more than methyl. So if we look at this carbon right here, this carbon would have a secondary hydrogen connected to him. So we're going to replace one of his hydrogens with a Br. But we happen to notice that if we do that, we're going to create a chiral center. And let's say, of course, on our exam, we look at our answer choices and we're noticing that they're showing stereochemistry. But we remembered that if we do create a chiral center here, that we're going to get a racemic mixture. We're going to get the Br adding to that carbon and we're going to get both R and S. So what we immediately do is draw out this right here. Notice this is showing our product with the chiral center right here like this. And he just happens to be the R version. And to figure out the other product, we simply can draw his mirror image right here with this being his chiral center. And of course, that carbon would be the S-type carbon. So notice how quickly we can get to a product here. And that's the stereochemistry for radical reactions with alkanes. But we've also learned a reaction when it comes to radicals with alkenes. What is the stereochemistry for this reaction? Well, remember first, what is the product of this reaction? Remember, it's an anti-Markovnikov reaction. So we're going to put the Br on the carbon that has more hydrogens. So we end up with this as a result. But notice, look what happened right here. This carbon here, notice, is chiral. Notice he has four different groups about him. And of course, what we want to determine is, what do we get? Do we get the R? Do we get the S-type carbon? Or do we also get a racemic mixture in this case? Well, again, let's do the same type of analysis here. Let's go back to our propagation step for the alkene radical reaction. Remember, we had formed the Br radical here, and he reacts with the alkene in this way. And we end up getting this right here as a result, the secondary radical. And then remember, that goes on to react again right here with HBr. This is our arrow movement right here. And we end up with this as a result, the product of the reaction. It's this propagation step right here that explains the stereochemistry of this reaction. Notice the characteristics here. We got as a reactant for this reaction, the Br is already attached to the carbon, and we got that radical carbon there that's about to accept a hydrogen. Let's go back to our reaction and look at the radical that would be formed for this particular reactant. Looking at him specifically, this is the radical that we would get. Notice we got the Br connected to the anti-Markovnikov carbon, and we have the radical on that carbon right there. And again, at this point, we're reacting the HBr, and the propagation step would look something like this. Arrow movement would be this here, which again is the step that attaches the H to that radical carbon. So here's the crux of the issue right here. It is this step right here that explains our stereochemistry. Again, notice we have a radical carbon that has three bonds. So it's also flat and planar like we saw before, which means when we add the hydrogen on in this step, it can add either to the back or again to the front. And if it creates the chiral center, which is what's happening here, we need to know that both front and back attack are equally likely. So what does that mean? Of course, racemic mixture is what we're going to get here. So it's the same thing that we saw in the alkane radical reaction. So, going back here, what are our products of this reaction? Well, again, we'd get a racemic mixture. We'd get both the R product, and we would get, of course, the S product. With this carbon right here becoming the new chiral centers right here. Take a minute and make sure you see the connections that are made here.
because in a second I'm going to show you the quick product method for this. So let's look at it here. We got a sample problem. Give the product of this reaction. How are you going to get through it quickly on your exam? Let's talk about it here. Your train of thought. Number one, you see HBr peroxide and an alkene. You know this is some kind of radical reaction. And you remember that when it comes to this, it ends up being an anti-Markovnikov reaction, which means we should decide that first before the stereochemistry. Which carbon is going to get the Br? Which carbon is going to get the H? Well, remember, because it's anti-Markovnikov, this carbon right here is going to get the Br. And therefore, this carbon right here is going to get the H. Now, that's our quick product method without stereochemistry. But if you are on an exam and you happen to notice that the carbon that you put the H on would become chiral, then you might want to think here, well, what would the stereochemistry be in this case? Well, again, we remember that the radical reactions have racemic mixtures. So what you're simply going to do here is connect the Br to that carbon on the right, the red carbon, and connect the H to the purple carbon there. And just make sure you show that purple carbon being either R or S, which means you would get something that looks like this right here. Make the connections here. Look at the product on the left. Notice we're showing that the purple carbon, the one that becomes the chiral center, does have the hydrogen connected to it. And if you investigated that carbon and set the priorities, you would notice that he is an R-type carbon. And notice we have the red carbon with the Br connected to it. Now look at the product on the right. Again, the purple carbon is the chiral center. He does have the blue H attached to him. And his configuration is S. And of course, we also have the red carbon with the Br attached to it. So this is how we immediately get to product if necessary. So what have we learned here? There's really only one key point, and that simply is, number one, if a chiral center is created in a radical substitution or addition reaction, then a racemic mixture is the result.